Welcome back. In this chapter, we'll be moving on to the next aspect of planning a workflow for scale, automations and integrations. Once you have defined and mapped your workflow, you should have some idea which automations and integrations you will need for your workflow. If you don't, then this is the time to start identifying them. In this chapter, we will look at involving the team in the decision making, adding permissions and factors to keep in mind when building out automations and integrations. So why are automations and integrations something we should keep in mind when building for scale? Well, we already know we might have a lot of users who are interacting with the workflow, a lot of contributors, and they might want to add their own automations to improve the workflow's efficiency. Given that we might also have a lot of steps in our large workflow which might need automating, we also might find that we are adding a huge number of automations to each board. We might also be working with a lot of different tools and plan to integrate between them. So given what we just said, let's take a look at some best practices when building out automations and integrations with scale in mind. Speak to the team that actually use the workflow to understand which automations they are expecting to see in that workflow. This will allow you to take their needs into account when building, so they won't feel a need to continue adding automations once the workflow has been built. Add permissions on automations when there is a large number of contributors. Restrict who is able to add automation to your account's boards to avoid users adding additional automations to existing boards, which could slow down the performance. We will dive deeper into permissions and governance in the next chapter. Where there are a lot of steps which need automating, pay close attention to make sure there aren't any duplicates or conflicts between the automations being added and that they are built out without errors. Avoid race automations. Larger workflows with huge amounts of separate automation recipes are at risk of race automations, which is where multiple automations conflict in terms of the order in which they are supposed to run or happen. This can cause the automations to not run. So the best way to avoid this is to consolidate automations into longer multi-step automations using the custom builder. However, remember I mentioned earlier that heavy automations are those which have a lot of actions happening at the same time and can impact on the performance of the board. We must also take this into account when trying to avoid race automations to build longer automation recipes without making them too heavy. When dealing with integrations, it is even more important to make sure that you plan them out in the most efficient way possible and map the transfer of data between the system. This reduces potential errors and makes it easier to maintain the integrations over time. We also recommend having an integration mapping document and placing it in the board description for easy access. Join us in the next chapter for the last factor to take into consideration when building workflows for scale managing end users.